A strange heaviness hangs in my chest. Why do I feel like this is the last time I will see him? Ah! Don't do that to me! Father, I'm sorry. I cannot be the queen you wanted me to be. Wait, what? What? In a monochrome world Working from the side Through her lonely eyes It reflects the ocean and stars But her cry echoes around The simple loss of love in her heart Making this whole fairy tale alive Faith and sorrow's tender embrace This was never meant to happen Day. The only reason you have to stay Hear me sing my song And just keep holding on Cinderella, why don't you stay with me tonight? We won't dance until midnight comes And we could run away Oh, we will never ever be apart Set aside all your fears This magic lives inside of us I am here, would you want to stay with me tonight? Across the bridge of fantasy oh, All the pain and sadness that you feel Believe in me Hold me close, don't ever let me go Come and stay with me forever The magic lives so long as I am here What's up guys, the name's Ronda Jagnell And welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon Hey, so remember I told you guys I wasn't gonna do the bad endings? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lied. <laughs> Most of you already knew that I was going to play the bad endings because I mentioned it. I was like, you guys ruined my surprise. I was like, I was going to be done with Cinderella Phenomenon, then boom, pop up with the bad endings. Oh boy. <laughs> so we are going to go in the order of the guys routes that I have done in, in bad endings. So the first one up, oh god, I'm going to cry, aren't I? The first one that we're going to do is Karma, and Jesus, I don't want, no, I don't want that. <laughs> but I'm going to do it. I want to get all the CGs. I want to know what happens. I don't want to watch it. I want to play it for myself. Kind of like for Seduce Me, the Otobe. I wanted to play myself and hear about the bad endings. The only, before, for Seduce Me, the Otome, the only bad ending I knew of was Eric's bad ending. I believe that was it. I didn't know about any of the other bad endings other than Eric's. Ah, he got stabbed through the heart and just, just, okay, no, don't do that. Don't do that to my baby Eric. Okay, I want to know what happens now, so. All right, first one is karma, so, oh god, I'm going to cry all day. I'll, I'll be right back. All right, well, okay, Um, the, the, the title said the beauty and the sinner. Okay, I, I don't know how to feel about that. Okay. Where did that beast come from? <laughs> Knights immediately rush toward me. I back away as far as I can without re-entering the throne room. Princess. Uh, licorice, you're blocking me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I have a, I have a she meant G up, so I was just letting him crawl all over. <laughs> I don't want I don't wanna affiliate him, he's too precious. Anyway, Princess, come quietly and we'll keep you somewhere safe until this is done until this all dies down. I raise my sword and stand ready when the knights surround me. I order you to stay out of my way. Our apologies, princess, but we are under orders from the king. Alcaster is not the true king. What did he offer you for your loyalty? Wealth? Status? That is none of your concern. Mm-hmm. One of the knights moved towards me, and I react on instinct, swiping at him. You might want to put that down before you hurt yourself, princess. I will not hurt myself because I know how to use a goddamn knife. Do not antagonize me. One knight rushes me and my blade connects with his shoulder. Another approaches me from behind and I hit him with the back of my sword. The third moves too fast for me and I feel his blade cut into my shoulder. Ah! <laughs> I hiss at the pain that sinks from the wound. 
I'm bleeding. The next time he swings, he's, I successfully manage to evade him, but then bump into another knight. I'm surrounded. Just come with us, princess. We don't want to hurt you. Uh-huh. No. I feel one of the knight's hands on my shoulder. I attempt to pull away to, from him, but stop when I hear him scream. <laughs> what? What? Oh! Oh, Karma! Claude! Oh, no! Claude! This is Claude! Oh, God. What's gonna happen now? Because we don't know that he's the beast. Oh, God. <laughs> the beast stands me behind me, eyes narrowed, its mouth gaping wide. A scream escapes my throat. Oh, God! The knight changed their focus to attacking the beast, but it easily swipes them away as it advances toward me. Oh, dear. It's getting closer! Oh, God! I desperately back up. However, my back soon hits a wall, and with nowhere else to go, I stand in a defensive position that Claude has taught me. I hold out the sword and then use it to throw back the beast's shadow Claude as he reaches out for me. Oh, God, no! That stands. It talks! Stay away from me! No! The beast moves toward me again, and I stumble in place, struggling to hold my ground. A knight throws his sword, the blade impaling itself into the beast's shoulder and giving me an opening. Oh, God. The beast's wounded arm swings to reach m into my reach, and I lash out with my sword, managing to draw blood. Oh, God. Princess. The Lord would never create a beast like this. This has to be Sir Mythos is doing. Oh, no. It's not. Do not compare him to Sir Mythos. I swear to God. No. An attacking knight catches the beast's attention, and I do not wait. Oh, God. No. No. As the beast turns, I raise my sword and manage to slide it deep into the beast's chest. Oh. Oh my god. A piercing cry erupts from somewhere deep in its throat, and I stumble back without my sword, which is still stabbed through the creature's heart. Oh my god. The beast collapses to the ground. I stare as it raises a hand to its chest. That motion reminds me so much of... Right? It was all... An... Illusion. Oh. No. A glimmer of light catches my eye. I freeze as I stare down at the ground. Oh my god, no! Right there, where the blood is already pooling around the sword, in the beast's chest, is a rose-shaped locket. The locket I gave Claude! What are you- The beast stares up at me with glassy eyes. Its mouth is barely moving. After a few moments, a, ro a low rumbling comes from the beast's throat, and I realize that it is a grisly pain chuckle. Afraid. Of me. I told you. Oh god. The beast stares at me, unblinking, but its eyes are already beginning to haze over. The way it speaks, and the locket that it has. I look at the locket again as the blood seeping beneath the surface, and I suddenly and suddenly I realize. If I ever told you the reason, you would uh flicker us again. You would hate me, Rena. And more accurately, you would be afraid of me. Oh my god. No. No, no, no. Oh no. I kneel down beside the beast. I was wrong. No, no, no. Claude. I clutch the locket to my chest as I kneel over the beast. Claude, no, please. I lean down to listen his, to his breathing, but there's nothing but silence. Oh god. Everything around me goes dark. I killed him. There's the sound of footsteps behind me, but they are mute. Unimportant. Claude. I'm so sorry. Oh my god. That was not the end, of course. <laughs> oh. Now I'm sad. Why would you do this to me? Poor Claude! Uh, uh, no! Oh god, next one! Oh, oh god, uh... I don't think I'm ready for the next one after Claude. Oh god. Claude, no! Oh! I'm, I'm not... I'm actually surprisingly not crying, but my heart just stopped, and I just... Uh, um... Um... Okay, um, next one is Rod. Oh, oh my god. A lot of you have told me the bad ending is horrible. The only thing I can imagine is that 
we were too late and Rod disappears because Vyriga is already married and stuff. Oh, God. Um, so I can only guess that he dies, he, that he also dies in his ending. Oh, God, please. No, please. Uh, let's, let's just go. <laughs> A strange heaviness hangs in my chest. Why do I feel like this is the last time I will see him? Ah, don't do that to me! Okay, uh, okay, I'm sorry. That, that part just stopped. I've never seen that part, so... Anyway. Chapter 10, Silent Farewell. Oh, God, no. I knew he was gonna die! Oh, no! When I push open the door, I find Rod kneeling down. Emmeline lies on the floor in front of him, unconscious. Emmeline! She's fine. She's just asleep. Something glints in Rod's hand. Even from this distance, I know that it is the same knife Emmeline was holding earlier. Out the corner of my eye, I see someone slouched against one of the pillars. Irika? I rush to her side, then sigh relief when I see the gentle rise and fall of her chest. She is still alive. How? How did she get here? It was Sir Mitos' plan. I remember walking back to my room after talking with you. I blacked out, and when I came to, I was already in here with Vyrika. I've already checked on her. She seems to be under some kind of sleeping spell. Em just came in a few moments ago, passed me the knife, and then simply collapsed after begging me to kill Vyrika. I think Em is under a spell as well. Rod glances down at the knife in his hand, expression glassy. Em almost convinced me. She pleaded that I not leave any of them behind. It's not as if I want to die and leave my family, but... He stares at the knife for a few moments and then curses as he slams his fist into the ground. I can't kill her. Why would Sir Mithros want me to do this? Guilt floods my chest, making it difficult to breathe. Um, I'm sorry about that! Um, I was the one who asked Sir Mithros to help Rod. He said he knew how to break his curse. Except we didn't read the story and we didn't find out. Oh, God. But I did not realize that in order to break his curse, he needed to kill the person he loved. I relied entirely on the story Emmeline told me, and that was my biggest mistake. I should have read the full fairy tale. I could never kill her. Such a shame. Man, fuck off! I hate you. Go, 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 go die in the ditch. Sir Mythos emerges from the shadows, looking at us with disappointment. To break his curse, Prince Rod must kill his beloved with the knife that his sister has brought him, just like in the fairy tale. Mythos turns to Rod. And here I thought that your sister might be able to change your mind. You were, after all, supposed to do this of your own accord. I was wrong. I shouldn't have underestimated your stubbornness. Casting a spell on you would have solved this problem entirely. God, no it would not not. Why are you doing this? Well... Sir Michael shifts his gaze to me. Rod follows his gaze to me and raises his eyebrows. There's no use lying to him, to, lying to him now. I... Ask Sir Mythos to help me break your curse. You what? I didn't know that you were meant to kill Vyrika. I... Rod shakes his head, his face marred with disappointment. I'm sorry! I didn't read the fairy tale! You should have known that! Anyone who tries to help me will inevitably make things harder for me, Rena. I wanted to help you, Rod. I've already made up my mind. If you really want to help me, then please respect my decision. Please. Shame. And here I thought I would be witnessing a dramatic finale tonight. And fuck off. So my thought starts to walk away. I'm about to chase after him, but then I realize that there is nothing else he can do. Rod has made his decision. Has made his decision. Oh, okay. So he's not gonna. So he's not gonna make him. Okay. Well, I'm actually relieved because you know he's not in love with Vyrika anymore. Oh God. I felt my heart plummet as I slowly nodded him. So. There really is no other way. I can never break my curse like this. Vyrika was my first love. And my good friend. And besides that, my love for her faded a long time ago. She's been... Replaced. Oh god, here it comes. You've been my beloved for quite some time already, Rena. Oh god, there it is! <laughs> but it doesn't matter, does it? I will die soon. Rod. I feel a heavy weight on my chest, as if some force is crushing my heart. I'm sorry. I promised myself that I would save your life, but I... I failed. I blink back the tears that are brimming in my eyes. 
Broad stands, then moves over to stand before me. He places a hand on my cheek. Oh, God. You've done nothing wrong, Rena. So please don't blame yourself. Oh, that's wild. Don't kill me. What did I expect to happen? Even if Broad had killed Byrika today, he would have carried that burden for the rest of his life. And all because I asked a witch to make him do something he did not want to do in the first place. Rod reaches for Sebi and places him in my hands. Oh my god, Sebi! Once the clock strikes 12, I'm going to disappear. It's really a shame that I'll be disappearing on your birthday! No! That's even more horrible! It would have been nice to celebrate this one with you. No, oh, Rod! Promise you'll take care of my family for me. There must be another way. You cannot go just yet. I'm sorry, Rena. Oh no, I cannot even bring myself to consider what is happening. Panic engulfs my senses as I stare at Rod, who is becoming transluent. Oh god. No! Rod, you are... If only I could be with you and everyone else just for a bit longer. Despite the fact that his words waver, when Rod looks at me, his smile is bright and warm. My vision blurs as tears gather in my eyes. I like you, Rena. If we'd had more time together, I think I would have grown to truly love you. <laughs> you would have! Oh my god! Even though this is a stepbrother stepsister relationship, I can't help but cry! Uh, no, well, I'm not crying, but I can't help but my heart feel heavy! Oh no! Don't cry! In the next instant, his body has dissolved into soft orbs of light. The light gathers in the air, then begins to fade. I'm so sorry. Oh god, stop. Don't, don't do that to me. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm sad now. Well, that was terrifying, wasn't it? Oh boy, oh boy, oh god. <sighs> now the next one. To the next one. Oh Jesus Lord, please help me. Um. Um. <laughs> Next one is Fritz. A lot of you have told me that. Um. A lot of you have told me that I will cry for him too. I haven't cried yet, but my heart feels heavy. Some of you actually kind of spoiled it for me, and I was not happy about that so I actually know what happens in his bad ending but I don't think I want to see it for myself but I'm going to anyway all right here we go this chapter says who's afraid of the big bad wolf and I'm like I'm not afraid of the big bad wolf oh god I'm I'm scared I'm scared though I tried my best to convince him that I need everyone else outside distracting mother Waltz insists on coming with me instead Waltz really should be helping everyone distract Mother. Though I admit I am glad he's here with me. He's not in his room. Where are we looking for the next for the king next? The throne room. He should be in there. He was always in the throne room whenever Mother left the palace. Looks like he isn't here either. Is there anything anywhere else he could be? If I was mother and I had to leave the palace to deal with enemies and I had something I wanted kept safe I would keep it as, I would keep it in a secret chamber somewhere no one would suspect suspect and that would be the tunnels let us go we're almost there thankfully the door to the tenebrum chair comes into view as we turn the last corner I push the doors open and look inside the king sits on the chair his eyes devoid of any emotion He's here! Is this what he's become? he's been like? Ever since Mother returned. His eyes are so... empty. Do you know how to break the enchantment on him? Walt seems forward to inspect the king's face. This is a high-level magic cast by Lady Hildire herself. This is not something I can break, unfortunately. It's something that the king will have to break out of on his, on his own. So this is completely different from... The last one he was actually in the throne room and we were able to break it but this time we bought waltz to break the enchantment but we can't do it uh but he's located different somewhere different now oh dear well would you look at what the cat dragged in Vark, no come on well it is your rope so what can i say 
bark. I look closely at Bark and notice that his usual cockiness and mirth are gone, replaced with something that looks like melancholy. He looks like he's in pain. He shouldn't have come here. What? He stares at us blankly. Waltz moves to stand in front of me, barring me from Varg and the king. If I had my way, I wouldn't hurt her, but that's not how this works. What are you talking about? Varg turns his gaze on me and does not look away as he speaks. I am the big bad wolf. I was made to devour Little Red Riding Hood here, not fall for her. Oh dear. Varg loves me? Varg laughs, but is a dry, humorless laugh. He looks surprised. Is it really so hard to believe that I have the ability to love someone? <laughs> Wallace's voice is quiet when he addresses me. He keeps his eyes trained on Varg. Get the king and get out. I'll be right behind you. No, I am not leaving you. No one is leaving anybody anywhere. Varg sighs. I cannot fully see his eyes, yet I can see the resigna resignation in them. I have orders to keep you here. Strict orders. The queen wants to see your daughter after she's done with your friends. As for her wereward apprentice, well, I was told you could be dead or alive. If you think I'm letting Rena stay, your opinion doesn't really matter. I'm sorry about this, princess. I am suddenly shoved to one side. I land heavily on the floor, my head thudding hard against the wall behind me. Rena! Walsh turns to warn me, but before he can move, he is blown back, past Varg and the king. He crashes to the wall on the opposite side of the chamber. Waltz! The element of surprise is so delightful. Man, fuck you! Go away! Ithros? What did you do? I glance once more at Waltz, but he is not moving. I struggle to, to my feet. You're not going anywhere. Before I can track his movements, Varg is already at my back. He pulls my arms so behind me so fast I have no way of resisting him. I can do nothing but watch as Mythos advances on Waltz. No, don't kill Waltz, please! Stop fighting, princess. I can feel his warm breath brush my ear as I fidget. I don't want to hurt you. You already have. Oh, God. That's... She's not wrong, you know. I turn my attention away from Fark and glance back at Mythros, who is still slowly walking toward Waltz, his expression tight with anger. Oh, God, if he kills Waltz here, that's going to be terrible. You were always the favorite, always the precious little student. And then you betrayed her. For what? Because she killed his parents, of course! A queen would have given you the world, yet you took her trust and threw it into the mud. Yeah, you don't understand how it feels to have the, the one person you trust to know that they killed your parents just because they wanted your child to be trained under their influence. Jesus Lord. Let me enlighten you. You're not needed anymore, Waltz. I cannot let this happen. Aduva! Bark's grip on me tightens, and I can hear the disappointment in his voice when he speaks. It won't work this time, princess. My heart plunges to my stomach. Oh, God. After you and the fairy left, what do you think the queen did, hmm? What are you talking about? She wasn't pleased with your little nice disobedience. And at that point, well, it didn't take much. What did she do to Fritz? A little push, just like that, and Fritz just disappeared. Gone. No, Fritz! Oh my god, no! Gone? I repeat the word hollowly, letting it sink into my mind and my heart. It's like he was never here. All you have now is me. My knees give out and I sink to the floor. I can no longer feel Varg's grip on me. I can no longer feel the dirt beneath my knees. I'm losing everyone. I'm losing all of them. One by one. Why didn't I think I could help? Why did I think I could do this? This is all my fault. I crane my neck upward to stare at my throat and Waltz. The queen has me now, Waltz, and I've been training. I am better. I am stronger. And I will deliver your head to my queen. I am paralyzed in Varg's arms, unable to move or speak as my throat moves close enough to deliver a magical blow to Waltz. Waltz! The room is suddenly filled with dust that spirals out from the center. I blink back tears as it stings my eyes. When it is clear, when it clears, Waltz is one more, once more standing. He and Mythros are glaring at each other. Waltz! But the sight of Waltz, alive and alive and defiant, is enough to shock my brain back into action. I must save the king. 
And once Mother is defeated, Fritz, Fritz might come back. Oh God. With renewed energy, I begin to want, once again struggle against Barg. Hey! I wrench myself to the side and have enough leverage to bite down onto his hand. He yelps and drops his cane. Sorry! Impudent girl. I look up to see Mythos already turned toward me with an outstretched hand. Light dances down his arm and collects on his fingertips. Oh god. You need to learn obedience. <laughs> no, Mythos, don't! Rena! I cannot stand idly in place as I always do. I must move! But even as I lift my feet from the ground, I can see that the light is going to chase me. And it will come for me no matter how far I run. Rena! At the very last minute, a sharp, sharp move. Blah, blah, blah. A shape moves in front of me, acting as a shield. Oh god, no! Ah! I see Vark's back moments before the spell pierces through his body and crumples him to the ground. No! Vark! His body collapses to the ground, his mask falling from his face. Why? Why did you save me? Oh, Vark! Dense to the end. Vark manages a weak laugh and then shakes his head. Even though I was the only one who was there with you, it was still him that you wanted. I loved you just as much, yet you would never choose me, would you? I... No, you wouldn't, because this big bad wolf doesn't have a happily ever after to begin with. Fading away like this hurts less than having to come to terms with that. Oh, Varg, I love you! Of course I do! I hear- I can hear the click of Mythos' shoes on the tile. His voice is filled with amusement. Even Walt seems too shocked to move. I knew there was a reason for your sudden disobedience. I suppose I should have expected this. Dogs always love their mistresses. God, stop. You're disgusting, Mythos, please. Bart reaches up to touch my cheek. He smiles as shadows creep up- creep up his body. Moments later, it is Fritz lying on the ground, smiling his gentle smile. No, oh, Fritz! Then he closes his eyes and does not open them. Not moving, not breathing. Gone. Time stops as my mind whirls. Oh, I feel my heart slowly beginning to break into shards. This is all my fault. Oh, God, stop! No! I already knew this would happen, and yet I'm sad! Oh, Fritz, Mark! Oh, God. Okay, well, I'm not gonna like this one more than anything. Um, we're... The next person is Rumpel. Yay! Chevalier, God. Oh, God, I'm gonna cry or die. I love... It. I love Rumpel! I love Chevalier! He makes me smile and happy, but this ending will not make me smile and happy. Fritz, Fritz is ending God. That, that was actually pretty sad. I already knew it was gonna happen because thanks guys for the spoilers. That's not what I wanted. Speaking, speak, I'm gonna speak of spoilers right now actually. If you're gonna post spoilers in the comments, please put the spoiler tag and put, so that people will know that it's a spoiler and you know, I don't, I can see that it's a spoiler tag and I won't read it because I want to know what happens. That kind of ruined, Fritz's ending kind of ruined, if you guys spoiling Fritz's ending for me, bad ending, it kind of ruined the suspense and stuff. So, um, yeah, it was kind of bad. I didn't really want that. So please, next time, put the spoiler tag. If you don't follow it, I'm gonna have to, and I see the spoiler, I'm gonna have to delete your comments, okay? I don't wanna have to res reside to that. I really don't. I, I told you guys before about spoilers that I don't mind them, but sometimes I actually do mind. That doesn't mean you can just spoil it in, in the comments. I really don't like to be spoiled. It, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't wanna be spoiled either if they haven't seen it, so. I advise that you put a spoiler warning. I know I have been telling spoilers if people haven't watched the other routes, and I actually deeply apologize for that, but I, next time I will give you spoiler warnings. Kind of like I gave you spoiler warnings for One on Ahara, if you guys haven't played it yet, in which I never say anything, you know. But, um, yes. 
end of that. Let's move on to Rumpel. Jesus, I'm gonna cry. And little baby Licorice is gonna watch with me. This is gonna be great. Chapter 10, Unraveled. Um, okay. Chevalier, snap out of it! Ah, just look at all of these men you cannot save. All of these men dying before your eyes. Chevalier, no, 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 don't fall for it! I... Chevalier, we have to get away from here! How many people have you really saved? In the grand scheme of things, you have no talent. Shut up, my throws! That is why you sought help from a witch. No! Mythos' voice is oddly calm and I can feel some sort of presence in the air that is different from normal. A knight plunges a sword through another's gut, causing him to lose, the, lose his sword. The sword skitters across the floor, gleaming underneath the moonlight. I look desperately at Chevalier and realize that the magic is already working its way into him. He does not see anyone except for Mythos, who is still smiling at him from behind all of the knights. I slowly inch backwards, making a slow look of Chevalier. Neither my throws nor Chevalier seem to see me. I will protect you, Chevalier. I will do whatever it takes, even if I have to kill someone. Oh God! I pluck the sword from my from the ground and grasp it at the hilt. It feels heavy in my hand, but I ignore the weight. I rush down the hallway with the sword, weaving my way to the side so that I am out of the way of the knights fighting each other. Of the knights fighting each other. I look squarely at my throws. Oh my God! We're gonna kill my throws! And then suddenly, Chevalier is. Chevalier's eyes flicker to me, only momentarily, but enough for me to know that he's no longer looking at Mythos in a daze. I turn back and see Chevalier rubbing his hand across his eyes. Mythos snaps his fingers and two of the fighting knights turn and rush toward me. Oh my god. <laughs> the knights manage to back me into a corner of the wall. I hold the blade out as they bear down on me and close my eyes. Oh gosh. My hands... Oh, licorice, I love you, but you can't... Okay, never mind. <laughs> My hands shake on the hilt, but I stand resolute, ready for the blow. Oh, God! But it does not come. Oh, my God, did he? Moments before the knights raise their sword, I am aware of breath on my cheek and beautiful violet eyes staring into my own. Runa! Ah! But the word ends in a gasp as the blade is buried deep into Chevalier's chest. Oh, my God! His words fade as his hands slide down on either side of me. He slumps and head, his, and his head falls to my shoulder. No! No! A raw sounds escape my throat as I feel the warmth leave Chevalier's body. Chevalier! I scream his name and he looks up, but his eyes do not see me. They are somewhere far away. My throat pulls Chevalier's body to the ground, where it falls with a terrible thud. My throat, you bitch! Inconsequential. I am deaf to Mythos' words. I slump down beside Chevalier, my hands reaching for his. His eyes are still open, but the light in them is gone. No! Tears stream down my face. I cannot breathe. I cannot hear my heart. Everything is quiet and dark. Chevalier! Now that, is the now that the obstacle is gone, you have nothing left, princess. Mythos' hands reach for me. I attempt to lift the sword, but he knocks it easily out of my hands. Are you truly the queen's daughter? The queen never cried. She was the strongest woman I knew. Shut up! I cannot breathe and cannot stifle the sobs escaping my throat. She taught me that sentimentality was nothing too value. That it would only make you weak. I assumed you knew that too, princess. But I was wrong. It would be a good thing when the queen's back on the throne. The weak do not win. He snaps his fingers and the witches con congregate around me. Now we shall use you to bait the fairy and everyone else will fall. I will unravel this effort at its heart. Oh my god. He nudges Chevalier's body. I look down at Chevalier's ashen face and sob. I let the tears gather in my eyes until I cannot see anything. Nothing matters anymore. Oh god. No, that's terrible! That is terrible! Don't do that to me! I don't know how to feel right now. I 
love Rubble way too much. I don't want that was terrible. Oh my god. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? What? <laughs> oh, all right. Well, we got one last person to do, and that's Waltz. Oh boy, that's great. I wonder how horrible, what horrible way he will die next. This is great. Um, okay. Just can't wait to see how Waltz will die. <laughs> oh, Waltz. All right, let's go. At least I, I think I can. Um, don't say you think you can. You can do it. Oh God. Oh no, this is gonna end horribly, isn't it? Father, I'm sorry. I cannot be the queen you wanted me to be. We what? What? Walter's life hangs in the balance. I must save him. I am sorry for being selfish. Art, uh, no, no, no. Do not tell me what I think she's gonna be do. I take a deep breath and with renewed determination push open the doors. Please, no, 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 no. Chapter 10, Peter Pan and the Lost Girl. God damn it, no, you're gonna do what I think you're gonna do. Jesus Christ, no. The first thing I see is mother up sitting, uh, sitting upon father's throne. Hello, dearest one. Man, fuck you. Mother. Somehow she looks even worse than earlier. My gaze is drawn to where Walt is sitting at Mother's feet. His eyes widen when he notices me. A bright light surrounds his body like a rope, keeping him in place. Walt! It looks as if he is trying to say something, but his mouth does not budge. It is as if his lips are sewn shut. What have you done to him? Don't worry, Rena. He is unharmed. But with these bindings, his magic is restricted. I just didn't want him to ruin our mother-daughter bonding time, so I sealed his lips. He, she didn't do that to him before. At least I didn't. I don't think so. I don't think she did. Mother draws her hand through Walt's hair in a way that reminds me of a mother coddling her child. I clench my fists. Let him go. Mother's eyes flash. She could hurt him so easily if I anger her. I am here now, so let him go. I think I shall keep him where he is until you set up. Oh, God, licorice, I love you. Don't do that. <laughs> like, I think I shall keep him where he is under, where he is until your side of the agreement is completed, dearest one. I can only manage to glare at her. Oh, my darling, don't look at me like that. Don't you want things to be how they were? We were so happy when we were together. I shake my head at her. That wasn't happiness. You kept me from happiness. And when I finally did find happiness, you took it away! Having friends, being loved by father. I could have had all of those if it weren't for you. And even now, you would take Waltz from me. Rather rests her chin on the palm of her hand, expression cold as ice. This boy makes you happier than I do? You would choose him over me? I am now looking at mother when I answer. Instead, I direct my attention to Waltz, who is shaking his head at me. My only apology to him is a silent frown. Yes. I meet Mother's gaze at last. Tell me what I must do to save him. The silence in the throne room is deafening, but I am resolute. Oh God, no matter what happens, Walt must live. Mother raises her hands to her chest, and moments later, a silver crystal begins to form, floating above the palms of her hands. The crystal's light is dim, it, its surface clouded, but I know exactly what it is. The crystal in Tenebrarum. It looks so much smaller than it was before. Mother walks toward me, a gentle smile on her face. Come, darling. Raise your hands to the tenebrero. I falter for an instant. Well, it seems like Walt might not get killed. Um, I hope not! If you take my powers from me, will I die? I will be very careful, Rena. Since you are offering your powers willingly, no harm shall come to you. Mother's smile is so sweet, her voice so reassuring. Don't do this, Rena! Waltz, your voice! If she takes away all your powers, you'll be nothing but an empty shell! Wait, no. Uh. Oh, Mother slaps Waltz before he can say anything else. He falls to his side. His body is still incapable of movement. Oh, God. No, that means we're... Waltz! 
Um, please stay there. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> While I'm impressed that you managed to break that spell, I'm confident that you will not be able to break your bindings. Mother lets out an exasperated sigh. My patience is running out, Rana. If you don't give me what I want, then I will have to force it at from you. I see Mother flick her hands cast a spell. I'm about to move, but I'm too late. Her spell collides with my body. Oh, God. I expect to feel pain, but I am surprised by the sudden lightness that overtakes me. Soon, my eyes grow heavy and my knees buckle, causing me to fall to the floor. I feel as light as air. Rena! I continue to lay there on the floor, unmoving, as Mother strides toward me. Don't worry, little one. Your nightmares will, be soon, will soon be over. Her face is the last thing I see before I'm consumed by endless darkness. Oh dear. Have you done as I commanded? Yes. Oh god! I can't hear you, Waltz. Yes, my queen. This penniness is unlike you, Waltz. I expected more. If you do not like working for me, you can simply say no. I would not force you to continue here against your will. You have served me well these past few months, after all. You know full well why I'm still here. You are still so enraptured with my daughter. But I do not blame you. I think she is lovelier now than she has ever been before. She does not talk back. She does not rebel. And she does everything I tell her to. She is far more obedient this way. I prefer it. Don't you agree, Rena? Yes. You made her like this. Of course you would think so. Oh, but she isn't dead. Isn't that why you continue to stay here? I have some desperate hope that you will be able to break her out of this spell. Return her to the way she was. How foolish. I must assure you that there is no way to reverse this spell. If Rena had been a good girl and done as she was told in the first place, she would not have been like this. Indeed, because you interrupted the initial process, there was no way for me to be, res to be restored to power without taking Rena's spirit. In a way, you made her into this, Waltz. She sacrificed herself for you. You have no one to blame but yourself. Stop it. You didn't have to do this. You didn't have to hurt her. Don't you love her? Deeply, as truly as any mother should love her daughter. It is a shame you cannot recognize that, Waltz. I have only acted for the benefit of all the witches. One day you will accept that. I know Rena already has. Am I right, Rena? Yes. Mother. Dang, that is horrible. At least Waltz didn't die, but that's horrible. We are like an empty shell. Ah, Captain Hook's hook. That's nice. That's a nice touch. <laughs> all right. Well, that was all bad endings, guys. Jesus Lord, I'm I'm just I am just okay. Well, my heart is not at ease. Oh God. Okay. Um, I don't know which one is bad. I didn't cry for any of them. My heart just kind of shattered. <laughs> uh, but Karma. Ka Claude. Claude getting stabbed actually broke, really broke my heart. And Chevalier, too. That really, that really broke my heart. The saddest one? I, the saddest one, I think I should say, it was probably Rod. I think Rod was the saddest because he just disappeared. He didn't get stabbed or anything. I'm glad for that, thankfully. But he just disappeared into, like, thin air. And then Lucette is just, like, standing there crying like what can I do there has to be something but it's too late and even then she's like Ugh. that kind of really hurt Rod Rod's ending actually was the saddest of them all for me everyone else getting stabbed except Waltz god that that just tore my heart that was it Rod disappearing into light that really tore my heart oh uh, Waltz though that that was sad that was really sad I'm glad he didn't die but Hildire still rules and that's and and we're under her spell. She, we are not ourselves anymore So um, that's pretty sad But out of every out of all the bad endings Rod's own has to be the saddest for me Because he just disappears and I didn't it was just horrible 
But, um, yeah. I guess that's it. You all expect me to think Claw's bending was terrible. Yes, it was terrible because we stabbed him in the heart and it just, oh god, oh. Uh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it was horrible, okay? All the bad endings were horrible. To me. In my opinion, all the bad endings were terrible. But for me, Rod took a toll. Okay. Okay. But that's it. That's officially it for Cinderella Phenomenon. So recommend me some games that you think I should play. Remember, the games have to be free because I am broke as hell. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I am broke. Re recommend some free ga RPG games that you think would be good. So, um... Yeah, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys would like to see more of my videos, then subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.